Hello everyone, now we are going to talk about the digestive and urogenital system of your toad. So let us get started. So first, um, if you take a look, so this is a toad that has been dissected and basically the body has been preserved informally. And so, you might be surprised it looks very different compared to when you have a fresh specimen where everything is red and disgusting and bloody. Okay. So for this one, everything's been preserved nicely, so it's easier to see the organs as they have more or less hardened. Okay, so when you dissect your toad, they're going to look like that. Okay, It's going to look like that when you first see the organs, so that's how they're arranged. And when we are going to talk about the digestive system, we are going to look at, of course, accessory organs and the actual gastrointestinal tract, or the GIT. So the GIT is where the food passes, whereas for your accessory glands, like your liver, your gallbladder, somewhere here, so this is also the liver, okay? So your accessory glands, they secrete certain substances that help in digestion, okay? So let's first look at your gastrointestinal tract, okay? So as you can see, I've um, we've moved away the liver and the heart, we've moved them to the side, so that you can actually see the stomach and the intestine. So first the food enters the mouth, okay, and then enters by way of the pharynx. The pharynx will eventually lead to your esophagus, okay. So the esophagus of the toad is pretty short, yeah, alright. And So the food passes through the esophagus and then finally it makes its way through the stomach, okay. Now the stomach, so this is the stomach. All right. So now your stomach has three main regions. So the first curve is called the fundus. The greater part, the larger part is called the body. And the final curve is the antrum. Okay? So those are the curvatures of your stomach. So your stomach is pretty much shaped like a bean, okay? There. Now, Dividing the esophagus in your stomach, so this region right here is called the cardia, okay? And there is a sphincter there, so a sphincter is a muscle that prevents the food from going back up the esophagus. And that sphincter is called the cardiac sphincter, okay? Now the same goes for when the stomach meets the small intestine. So before the stomach finally finally leads to the small intestine, there is also a region there that is called the pylorus, okay? And again, there is a sphincter there called the pyloric sphincter, which prevents the food from going back to the stomach, and vice versa, okay? So you don't want things to mix up, all right? Now, after the stomach, we now go, so the food goes to the small intestines. Now, the small intestines are divided into three main parts the duodenum, which is the part that is closest to the stomach, the jejunum, again the demarcation, or the, for the jejunum, which is the part that's in the middle, it's not actually clear in the toad where it starts or where it stops, so you have to have a closer look or a finer look to find out, but from here it's not quite demarcated, okay? And then at the, f the terminal part or the final part of your small intestine, that will be your ileum, okay? There, so it's not the bone, the spelling is different, okay? So this is an ileum with an E, okay? And then, finally, after the ileum, we now go to the large intestine. So the, this part right here, that is your colon, okay? So the colon, eventually, it leads to the rectum, and then eventually leads to the cloaca, okay? So what happens, so food passes and then it's partially stored and partially digested in your stomach, so it is stored and partially digested in your stomach and then the nutrients from the digested matter are absorbed in your small intestines, okay? And then finally excess or the undigested materials move to the colon, to the large intestines and the water is resorbed, okay? The water is resorbed by your colon, okay? Otherwise, you would have diarrhea. If your colon does not absorb the water, you will get diarrhea, okay? 
And then, finally, the wastes are passed out through the cloaca. Okay? So that's pretty much the gastrointestinal tract. The next thing that we will discuss now would be the accessory glands, or the other glands that are involved in digestion. First off would be the liver, which is this entire black part here, and this black part here. So this is normally bigger, but I've cut away the liver just to see the other organs, okay? So the liver, it secretes bile, which helps to emulsify fats, okay? It helps to digest fats, all right? And this bile is stored in this part right here. So there's a greenish, bluish, blackish um, sac right there that you will see. It's right behind the heart, so you can flip the heart, and then you'll see it. It's right there. It's called the gallbladder, and it stores the bile, okay? And then, now, next is if you flip the stomach upwards, okay, stomach, small intestine, you will see that there is a yellow substance attached to it. So it kind of looks like fat, but actually it's not. So this is your pancreas, okay? So this pancreas is the one that basically digests, or I'm sorry, it secretes insulin, glucagon, so these are different um, hormones that are involved in sugar metabolism, okay? And then these parts, those are the blood vessels there, okay? Yeah. So those are basically the accessory glands involved in digestion. So that's for the digestive system. So now let's move on to the urogenital system, okay? So what happens is, uh, for the urogenital system, so of course, this is the part where, of course, the blood is filtered, okay? So the blood is um, regularly filtered by your kidneys, and then the waste materials are passed out in urine, okay? So first, um, the, the kidney is not seen here, so we will look at that later, but this one, the one that is lifted by your forceps, so this part, that is called, well, that is your urinary bladder. Okay, so that is where urine is stored, okay? So there's also one on the other side, but of course, I didn't lift that, okay? So just to show you, so this is the urinary bladder. In the fresh, um, d freshly dissected toads, you will see that this is usually a clear bag, and if you're lucky, there's actually liquid inside, which is urine, okay? So if the toad has a full bladder, you're going to see that there's a bit of liquid inside, okay? So, now this is the view, so if you can see this part right there, you can see that part. It looks like this brown sausage right there. That is your kidney, okay? Both sides. So the kidney, so there are two kidneys, one on the right and one on the left, okay? So the one we are seeing here is the one on the right, okay? And for your kidney, you will notice in your freshly dissected toad there is a white band a very thin white or pinkish band that is sitting on top of the kidney that is your adrenal gland okay and it secretes um, different kinds of hormones that are involved in the flight or fight response and also in the regulation of salts and minerals in your body okay there. So that's basically the urinary system. Okay. So the kidney filters the blood, okay, and then basically secretes the urine. And then for the urinary bladder, it's the one that stores the urine, then it goes out the cloaca. Okay. There. Now let's move on to the reproductive systems. Okay. So this is pretty much the same view, the same toad. You will notice. Okay, so the one here being held by the forceps, this one, that is called the fat body. Okay, fat body. There. And then this one, that will be your testis. Okay, so there are two. There's another one on the other side, of course. So your testis actually sits on top of the kidney of your toad, in your male toad. So, yes, this is a male toad. Okay, so this is the testis. So how do you know 
that it is not an intestine. Quite simple. It's a very isolated bean. They have the same color, but if it does not occur in a long tube and if it sits on top of the kidney, then you can be sure that it is the testis. Okay? There. So that's for the male um, genital system or the male reproductive system. Now let's look okay, at the female. So now let's put them side by side. Okay? So, for the female, so this one, the entire black part, so that will be the ovary that's filled with eggs. So these are your ovaries, and they are filled with eggs. So the black and white ones are the eggs, okay? They are not ovaries, they are just the eggs inside the ovary, okay? There. So then after that, okay? you have this white part, the one that is pinned with a white pin, so this part that is your OV duct, so that's where the eggs pass okay, before they are expelled to the cloaca, okay, there so ovaries, ovaries, and then the OV duct, so there's also one on the other side but it's obscured by the entire mass of eggs, okay and basically that's it. That's how you will be able to differentiate it internally. Okay. So how do you differentiate the OV duct from the intestine? For the OV duct it looks um, wider and the duct is a lot thinner compared to the intestine which is really a, a fatter tube. Okay. So for the male, so where's the testis? It's right here. Okay. So it's very different. As you can see, it's isolated from the intestine. So there's just no way that you can mistake this for an intestine. Okay? There. And then for the female, so ovaries with eggs, and then the oviduct. Alright, so that's pretty much the digestive and urogenital system of your toad. Okay? There. So good luck in your exams. So thank you very much for watching.